You might know Imperial Howl for his incredible highlights. I got one. Where? What are they pulling? I got another. Oh my god. You might know him because he can get a little spicy in calm. I'm pushing. Come on. Come on. Me. Come on. Me. Go on. Me. I don't. Yeah. Come to. This is a better spot, I think. No. Get the. Over here right now. Maybe he's not for everyone. I can't. Bro. That we play over there early. I can't do how right now, bro. Like low key, I cannot. Like he actually stressed me out. I feel like I'm losing. I'm losing life expectancy. But if you follow Apex Legends esports, it's fair to say that the reason you know how is because he's so good that he's impossible to ignore. I suck one. Oh my god! Oh my god! They just got vaporized. <laughs> Doesn't want the res. Nice tracking. Ooh, Very go. good damage there. There's a bunch of people here though. The smoke might help him. Oh, oh. Look at him. beautiful. That is excellent. It's not the safest. And is he just coming in from below. Nice stuff there. What a response. Atletico's Neon is going to go down. And Alba Lele is going to finish off Not KD as well and say goodbye to the Aussies. After fleeing a failing battle royale, Hal became the star of a game that was struggling for recognition. And he didn't just stand out, he exploded. Imperial Howe is the head-clicking, shit-talking leader of TSM's Apex Legends team. But this life was never his plan. It was more it was like a hobby. I never really wanted it to turn into like a job. It was I didn't like think it would. Weren't you playing on some like laptop that was just? I heard your story. It was just. Oh yeah, I used brutal. to play it, like on a brutal. really bad laptop. In H1, first, right? like in H one Z one, yeah. But eventually, I was able to go to LAN, and then I got money from LAN to buy my own PC. But it was never like during my childhood. I was like never like planning on you know playing video games for a living. That LAN was the H1Z1 Elite Series in Atlanta, where his team, Hail Chapters, placed fourth. And his performance was enough for Cloud9 to sign him to their H1Z1 roster in April 2018. Hal's future seemed bright. He was a young player who just signed with a major esports org. But then, life threw him a curveball. In the summer of 2018, after just one split, the H1Z1 Pro League collapsed. An esports career may not have been Hal's goal, but after breaking into a scene just before it fell apart, he started looking at other games for new opportunities. If you were a Battle Royale player in 2018, you had to at least consider Fortnite as an option. And Hal did. But it didn't exactly work out. And he hasn't really changed his mind about the game since. I'm done. Then like, my f God! I'm so done with this! Hey man, I'm so done with this game. Like, what are you doing? Hal got the chance to play Fortnite duos at TwitchCon in late 2018, and he took it. Playing alongside former Cloud9 PUBG player Frex, they took home a $10,000 team prize for placing the top 64. But the game that launched Hal into stardom was just over the horizon. Kodai Squad wins again. Their deaths still carry honor. Poor oh, bastards. Check out the loot, they left Gibraltar. <laughs> uh, I, I was playing Fortnite before Apex, so as soon as Apex came out, I instantly tried Apex, and I really liked the game, but I didn't really like Fortnite, so I decided to instantly switch. So that's how I started playing Apex. Apex Legends was part battle royale, part hero shooter. But to Hal, it represented an even greater opportunity than H1Z1. He signed with Team Solo Mid in March 2019, and eventually, he got to have a say on the team's roster moves. Reps and Alborelli were soon added to the team at his recommendation. That you guys I've never played with Mac before, before I picked like him up. That. I've never talked to him before I picked, up with, yeah. I picked, before I picked him up. I <laughs> never played with Jordan before I picked him up or even talked to him. I just messaged Jordan like, hey, want to join TSM? That's actually pretty insane. Suddenly, after the changes, TSM were unstoppable. Doesn't want the res. Nice tracking. Ooh, Very go. good damage there. There's a bunch of people here though. The smoke might help him. Oh, oh. look at him. Beautiful. That is excellent. Which might explain why he's so low on shotgun ammo at the moment. Oh, so good. I'm telling you, man. He's got this best, the best pathfinder movement. or well, some of the best for sure. 
parts of that sexy Pathfinder movie. There we go. Oh, oh, oh. He's on my ass. There we go. We still have three. And there is the bounty, the booty. TSM still in this center position. They have been unmatched this whole time. Maybe got peppered up a few times, but boy, oh boy, they have looked beautiful. Imperial Hal finds two in front of him. He's going to have the R99 shredding through the shields. Here comes the EVA-8, and it is going to do the job, clean up duty, and they get a few more kills in turn. It's not the safest. And he's coming in from below. Nice stuff there. What a response. Atletico's Neon is going to go down, and Alba Lele is going to finish off not Katie as well and say goodbye to the Aussies. Only one can get the gold, and it's going to go to none other than Team Solo Mid. TSM's rise culminated at the Apex Legends Preseason Invitational, the first ever international tournament held by the game's developer. Gamers Origin, or TSM. Who will be your champions? You Portal out here for TSM. Five seconds and counting. Bravo. Let's do this. Here we go. This could be it. Two teams on match point here. MVP pushing in. Can they get this first knock? Doesn't come in. Ross has to stay alive. Very low HP for the Wraith. Very early iframe, so that's going to be a big setback there. But MVP is not the one we're worried about. Is they're just a setback here for TSM. Who is going to do it? TSM, you're your champion. It took him a while to get to match point. But in the end, they win back-to-back -back Apex Legends tournaments. Your X Games winners, and your winners of the Apex Legends preseason invitational. Imperial Howl and TSM were on top of the young Apex world. The $100,000 grand prize was a bigger take than anything Howl had ever seen in his career. But the preseason event gave way to an unexpected reality. The global pandemic forced the Apex Legends Global Series on a line for its inaugural season. The ALGS still went ahead, and the online-only format allowed players stuck at home to stream their own POV. This gave them a chance to not only come into their own as players, but as creators as well. Hal was immediately popular. It helped that his team was one of the best in the world, but his popularity was growing thanks to something else. Whether it was from his POV streams in competitive games or just during his ranked game streaming in his free time, Hal's comms could get pretty blunt. Myself. Like, what the f are you doing? They're coming back to f Come back, holy f Like, why the f are you here, bro? He's uh, very emotional with the game. Very emotional. Uh, if he dies in a really dumb way or something, we will know about it yeah. because he will be yelling. Yeah. <laughs> but while many interpreted his tone as overly harsh or even toxic, Hal didn't see it that way. When you're in IGL and you're like blunt, you're just going to be normal. You're always going to get called toxic no matter what. You can't like change that. I don't know how to turn off competitiveness. I always, I, I every time I play Apex, I'm competitive. No matter if it's a pub, it's a rank game or whatever the fuck it is. TSM's honeymoon period in late 2019 was incredible. But by mid-2020, things were starting to fall apart a bit at big events. After coming into the Summer Circuit Regional Playoffs as the points leader, TSM finished sixth, a far cry from the dominant first place finishes they were used to. And so in October, Hal made another change to the team. After Alborelli stepped down, Hal tapped Snipe down, a storied FPS veteran who just made the jump to Apex. Snipe was always on his knees for me after we beat him, so <laughs> he was next to line. He was buttering up. He was pretty good on his yeah, knees. Yeah. Snipe was a fan, for sure. He was pretty good on his knees, so... Despite being eight years older than Hal, and basically ancient by esports terms, Snipedown made sense. He came from the Halo scene, which was known for not holding back. If there's one player on EG that you feel you need to shut down, who is that player? Probably Snipedown. He's, like, the best player. He's just so sick, you know? I get really worried when I see him, and you know, it's just the stuff he does is insane. All right, well, uh, any any words here, Slap Down? I remember what happened last time that exact quote was said to me. So, uh, watch your face. Snipe said that no matter what anyone said about Hal's calm style, the atmosphere on the team fit him just fine. I was drawn to your guys' team because I felt like you guys were the only team that had like the same competitive mindset that I had brought over, yeah. and I was like, I don't. I want to I want to win and if I don't win like I'm not just okay with that
And despite everybody on the team willing to be completely, brutally honest with each other, Hal says that he's learned when to let things go. It, it doesn't affect me when I get, you know, like mad or whatever, but it would affect my teammates, right? So it was important for me to, you know, like let them know like, you know, what they did wrong, but at the same time move on because oh, yeah. there's still more games to, you know, to play out. Yeah, we got to be aware of what went wrong and everything and uh, like talk about it, but you know, we don't have to talk about it for 30 minutes and then still going into the next game. No. Like, you gotta move on. Yeah. TSM improved to third at the Autumn NA Super Regional. And whether the fans thought Hal was toxic or not just didn't matter to the new roster. But that didn't mean the issue went away. At the second week of the NA Winter Circuit, Hal's comms were singled out by ALGS caster T-Squared as being the opposite of constructive. Well, it happened last game where Protectful and his team went over towards Fragment and they ended up killing TSM. And I wanted to go tune into Hal's stream to see exactly what was happening. And the communication was completely different than what was going on with Complexity, where they're talking about things, being positive, etc. It was more Hal just kind of yelling at his teammates and being like, how do we lose this? Or I understand the competitiveness about it, but you can't go through and, you know, ego charge these teams over towards uh -huh. Fragment side. Yes, it sucks that Protectful's team's going and dropping over there. It sucks even worse that you just lost your 50-50 because now they're going to continue to drop there. They're going to continue to add the pressure on. And you got to feel bad for a player like Reps who probably didn't want to take that fight to begin with. And you don't really hear much communication going on between TSM when you compare it to a team like Complexis. And while the two exchanged words on Twitter afterwards, this issue again raised the question of whether or not Hal is driven or just toxic. As long as Hal remains his outspoken self and has teammates willing to embrace the criticism and speak their own minds as well, it seems like the discussion is just gonna keep going. Whether you love Hal or not, it's hard to deny that the combination of his attitude and his results are what make him one of the most exciting players in Apex. I don't play other games than Apex, other than Apex. I do not go to school. I literally, all I do chat is I wake up, you know, do the morning routine, get on and play Apex. Being good at the game is important. Another third place finish at the 2021 ALGS NA Championship showed that TSM is still hanging with the game's best. But TSM kind of just watching everything go down. How managed to get a stick there onto Bronzy as well as now Letter E are gonna make their move. The bubble goes down, the ultimate goes down from the core stick. Keeping our eye on the feed as these teams fight as Snipe Down is brought back into the game. He's only got an heirloom to work with, but Snipe Down still trying to do what he can do. He got two kills with the heirloom, but he's gonna go down, and the rest of TSM is all down. So Reps and Reps goes off. Oh, and what have I just Reps. seen? What did Reps just do? But the only thing better than being amazing at a game is having a unique style and approach that gets people talking about you. Put the ball in your playmaker's hand and let him make the plays in the late game when it matters the most, AKA Imperial Hal. One of the best, if not arguably the best in the world to do it. Apex Legends is gonna be moving back to LAN in the near future. And Hal is one of the stars that a new crop of aspiring players are gonna be looking up to. Because in the cutthroat world of battle royales, Hal is a reminder that no matter what people say about you, whether or not they call you toxic, being deeply competitive is still a path to success. If you ever wanna get better, just play how I do. Play like you have no care, you wanna push everybody, play solo pubs, try to 1v3, that's how you get better. Pokemon Go. Uh, 2018 is a little late for Pokemon Go to launch somebody to start him. That was like 2016, right? No, Pokemon Go was. When did Pokemon? When was the summer of Pokemon Go? I feel like that was 2016 or 2017. I know it was wrong when it happened. I think it might have been. 20 it, July 6, 2016. That was when Pokemon Go came out. Oh, well, okay. No, dude, it was also big the next summer, but that first summer was absolute peak. I remember, man, it was crazy in Toronto.